Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, among many different theorems which we were discussing, which are related to derivatives, um, there is one which I call method. Well, not I call. Everybody calls it method. Newton's method. Well, it's related to finding zeros of the function. Um, now, um, obviously, in those cases when you can find zeros of the function just analytically, the method doesn't really make much sense because this is actually the method which allows you to find zeros of a wide range of functions, especially in those cases when there is no analytical solution. All right, as always, let me just uh, make this preamble that this particular lecture is part of the course of advanced mathematics, which is presented on unizor.com. Um, I suggest you to watch this lecture from this website because it has the text for notes for each lecture, which basically constitutes like a textbook for you. Plus, science student um, can take exams, for instance. Site is completely free and no advertising, so feel free to use the website rather than just the YouTube vi video if you have found it on YouTube. All right, so again, the purpose of this so-called Newton's method is to find the solution of function of uh, equation f of x is equal to zero. Now, in some cases, obviously, uh, this can be found without any kind of a specific methodology, just analytically. But in many cases, analytical solutions is difficult, in which case the Newton's method is really applicable. It is heavily related to derivatives, and that's why actually this particular method is part of the so-called main theorems related to derivatives. Um, the word of warning, however, this is not a universally um, working method under any circumstances, etc. There are certain restrictions and there are certain rules to apply this particular method, and I will go into this in a little bit later in some details. So. Now, to present this method, I have chosen actually the way um, where analytical solution is possible. It's a very easy example, but it illustrates quite well the methodology. And then we can just talk about some other way, some other functions, for instance, where the method can be applied. So let me start with a very, very simple equation. which I'm sure everybody can solve even without using paper and pen. Obviously, x is equal to 2 is a solution of this particular equation. But I would like to approach this as if I don't know this solution. So let's pretend that I don't know how to um, solve this uh, analytically. And I would like to solve it using this Newton's method. So. First of all, let me just explain graphically what it actually means. Well, graphically, um, this particular function, uh, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, that's enough for me. So. Um, let me just draw this particular graphs, this particular graph of this function. It goes like this. At point 2, it's equal to 0. At point 4, it's equal to 8 minus 4, 4. And this is a straight line. So, what I'm looking for, I'm looking for this value, where the function intersecting well, the graph of the function uh, intersects the x-axis, right? That's exactly where the function is equal to zero, and the value of x at this particular point is the solution, which I pretend that I don't know. So, um, here is how we can approach it. Let's consider this triangle, A, B, C. What do I know about this triangle if my point A is chosen completely arbitrarily. So I just chose 
point, point A at point X is equal to 4. So let's start with X0 is equal to 4. I've chosen it completely off the blue. Well, I can definitely substitute 4 as X and get the value of AB, right? So point A has coordinates 0, 4. Point B has coordinates, um, oh, sorry, it's 4, 0. 4, 0, not 0, 4. I fixed the X coordinate. Uh, 4, what am I writing? 4, 0. Point B, <laughs> that's called inertia. Okay, point B has coordinates for 4. How I got that? I substituted x is equal to 4 into this equation. I mean, not the equation, the function, actually. I don't know when it's equal to, 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 to 0. Uh, and got 4. 2 times 4 minus 4, that's 4. So I know AB. Okay, that's very interesting. So I know the catechus of this right triangle. Now, how about angle BCA? Angle BCA um, has, let's call it phi. So what I know is that tangent of phi is equal to AB over AC, right? At the same time, now we're going to derivatives. What is uh, this particular angle, tangent of this angle? Tangent is a derivative at point C, which is the same as derivative at, at, at point B because it's a straight line, right? Tangent is exactly the same. This is also the same angle phi, right? So it's equal to a derivative at point x0. Which I know in this case it's equal to what's the derivative? Derivative of this function is equal to 2, right? Now, knowing a catetus and the tangent of this angle, I can find out AC. AC is equal to AB divided by tangent phi, right? From here. AC is equal to AB divided by tangent phi, which is. I know AB is 4, I know the tangent is 2, which is 4 divided by 2, which is 2. Now, knowing AC, I can very easily determine the coordinate at point C. Coordinate at point C is equal to x coordinate of A minus this, which is 4, that's coordinate of point A, x coordinate minus the length of this segment, which is AC, which is 2, minus 2, and it's equal to 2. And 2 is a solution to our um, original equality. Now, what's basically, let's call um, this particular point X1. So what did I do? X1 is equal to what? It's equal to original um, coordinate of the point A, which is x0, minus um, AB, which is value of the function at my point uh, x0. So this is x0 and this is x1. So it's value of the function at point x0 divided by tangent, which is a derivative at point x0. So that's basically what I did. These are my calculations. So first I chose completely arbitrarily point x0, in this case is equal to 4. Then I took the value of the function at that point, which is function of x0, that's AB. And to get the AC, I divided it by the tangent of this angle, which is the same as tangent of this angle, which is the same as derivative. Uh, of my function, and I know the function, so I know it's derivative, it's 2, in this case, constant, by the way, 
But in any case, it's derivative taken at this particular point. And, um, and, that, and if I uh, subtract this segment length from the original coordinate of the point A, I will get coordinate of the point C. Now, what's very remarkable about this? This is everything which I know how to calculate for any x0, right? No matter what x0 I take, 4 or 5, I mean, I can take 5, for instance. What if, what if I take 5? If I take 5, I will have 5 minus 5 divided by, no, uh, no, that's not 5. Uh, 5, that's um, 10, that's 6, sorry. Six. That's six. Divided by uh, derivative, which is the same two, so five minus three, which is exactly the same. Once more, we got exactly the same two. So, regardless of where exactly I, I chose this uh, point A, um, I can calculate this uh, because everything here depends on the point A only. That's coordinate of the point A. That's the function at point A, and that's a derivative at point A. So, chosen any point A, I can find x1. And that's very, very important. It gives you an algorithm, basically, to solve this equation without basically solving it. All I have to do is, I have to calculate certain things. I have to calculate the value of the function at any given point, and the value of its derivative at that point, and then my calculations are from here. Now, obviously nobody is doing this on linear functions, so let me just make a little bit more complicated example, and we will see how it's applicable. Okay. My next function is two ninths x squared plus two ninths x minus four ninths. Here is the reason why I chose these rational numbers. It will be obvious from the graph. So let me just put one, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, what's about this is that my old line, which was which was this. is actually a tangential line to this particular um, quadratic polynomial. I specifically chose quadratic polynomial in such a way, I obviously made some calculations, so I chose it so it goes, so the, uh, uh, so my tangential line w w would be exactly like this. So this my old line, straight line, is a tangent for the parabola, which is the graph of this function. Okay? Now, for instance, I don't know how to solve quadratic equation, so I have to solve this f of x is equal to zero equation. And I have no idea how to solve quadratic, quadratic equation. By the way, in case of cubic equation, if it's the third degree, it's really difficult to do it analytically. I mean, there is some formula, uh, Cardano's formula, but nobody's using it anyway right now. So everybody is doing some approximation, right? So that's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for approximation. So what do I notice here? I notice that um, the tangential line to this parabola basically goes to the same direction at any from any randomly chosen fun, uh, point, uh, in this case I have chosen again my point x0 exactly equals to 4 as before. So both tangential line and the parabola are going towards left 
from this point. So I expect, basically, that when parabola is intersecting my x-axis, and that's the solution which I'm looking for, right? Where exactly f of x is equal to zero. That's the point uh, x is equal to one, by the way. I mean, if you will substitute one, it will be zero. So let's pretend we don't know this, but in any case, one is the solution. So my point is the tangential line that's actually the structure of tangential line, and that's how Newton was actually thinking along these particular lines of uh, reasoning. It goes towards the same direction from the first arbitrarily chosen point towards the x-axis, which means that this particular point is closer to the solution than original. That's his idea. And in many cases, that's actually true. So, but let's assume that this is the true statement. So we have come closer to a, uh, the real uh, solution um, than before. Which means what? Which means we can actually start repeating the same, um, uh, the same action. So I will find the perpendicular, same thing as this, and start tangential line again. And again I should get closer to my solution. So that was his original idea. So let's just try to calculate. So x0 is equal to 4, x1 is equal to x0 minus function of at point, uh, at point x0 divided by tangential line, uh, divided by tangent of this angle. Now what's the tangent of this angle? Well, that's actually a derivative at this point, right? Which is equal to what? 4 minus function of x0, if this is equal to 4, um, it's equal to 16 nines minus, uh, no, 32. 32 nines. That's 16, 32. Now this is 8 minus 8 nines and plus 4 nines. Right? 4 minus divided. Okay, let's put it this way. because I have to divide it by the derivative at point x0, this one. Derivative is equal to, let's just put it down, f at x is equal to uh, 4 9 x plus 2 nines. So at point x is equal to x0, which is 4, that's 16 nines, so that should be, let me write it down this way, 16 nines plus 2 nines, 4 minus. So that's how it will be, right? So f of x0 is this one, and uh, divided by, I think I, it's 436, divided by 18, so that's actually 2, which is equal to 4 minus 2, which is equal to 2. And that's absolutely the same, by the way, as we have completed the previous example, if you remember. And as we should, because I said that I have chosen this particular parabola in such a way that the tangential line is exactly as my first example. So obviously I've got 2, and that's how it's supposed to be. All right. But now I would like to repeat the same thing. <coughs> Assuming that by taking as before, going up perpendicularly to the uh, intersection with my parabola from this point, so my x1 is equal to 2. Okay, now x2, I will do exactly the same.
and let's see what it, what it will be equal to. So, my f of x1, x1 is equal to 2, so it would be, so x1, 2, minus, um, so 2 is 4, uh, 8 nines, this is 2 plus 4 nines, minus 4 nines. And here, if I have put 2, I will have 10 nines, right? 8 9 plus 2 9. So this is 8 over 10, right? This is 8 over 10, 4 fifths. So it's 2 minus 4 fifths, which is what? Six fifths. Well, yes, six, six fifths is a little bit greater than one. So this is my six fifths. And yes, indeed, I am closer to one. Now, if I will do exactly the same again, so starting from the point x is equal to six fifths, I um, uh, put the perpendicular up to intersection with parabola, then um, the tangential line and I will repeat exactly the same calculations and I'm not going to do it right now because I did it before and x3 is equal to 1.01176 as you see we are within one hundredths of the solution and as you understand, if you repeat this process as many times as you want, you get as closer to 1 as you want. This is exactly the Newton's method. This is exactly the, the key to the whole thing. This is uh, how uh, contemporary computers, for instance, can calculate the roots of certain equations, the zero, zero functions, okay? So, as you see, we are getting closer and closer. So, my point is that uh, the um, final formula for the Newton's method is the following. xn plus 1 is equal to xn minus function of xn divided by its derivative at, of x, uh, xn. This is a recursive process. You start from any point x0 equal to whatever you want. Well, I will explain, not exactly whatever you want. But for instance, you start somewhere, you don't know the solution. You start somewhere. And then you follow this process, and this, as you see, the right side depends only on the point which you have chosen. If it's x0, then everything depends on, F, F, uh, 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 on x0 and the function and the derivative at point um, x0. So there is no unknowns thing. And that's how you get x1. From x1 you get x2, from x2, x3, etc. Well, let me start first uh, with some good things. So, so, for instance, everything is good and you are approaching the solution as in this particular case. When should you stop? Well, actually, wherever you want. It depends on um, certain rules for precisions which you would like actually to to, to use. If your precision, for instance, is, um, okay, I will be satisfied if my result is within, let's say, one thousandths of zero. So you substitute this into your equation and see how far from zero you are. If you are within one thousandths of zero, you stop. Or you might say that I can stop if my next uh, value differs from the previous value by, let's say, one thousandths. Or you might actually require both. When your value is less than certain uh, value and the difference between success, uh, success, uh, successive uh, uh, x-coordinates and if you substitute it into the function you get no more than certain uh, precision uh, boundaries within zero. So it's basically up to you, but these are natural rules which everybody establishes for uh, himself based on concrete application. Now, what's the bad news? 
Well, the bad news is that this method is not necessarily working in all the cases. And that's what I'm going to explain you. Okay, um, let's say you have chosen a point arbitrarily and your tangential line instead of hitting the x-axis is actually parallel. What if you chose this particular x and your tangential line is parallel? Well, it means it's parallel to x-axis, which means you, there is no intersection and you can't really uh, step from x0 to x1. There is no x1. Well, what should you do in this particular case? Well, try to use another point as a, your initial um, starting point. So instead of x0 equal to whatever it is in this particular case, um, by the way, where is uh, the uh, derivative is equal to 0 in this particular case? Well, it's equal to 0 when x is equal to minus 1 half, right? So if your initial point x0 is minus 1 half, you will have this derivative uh, equal to 0, which means you cannot divide for it because there is no and there is no x1 so that's a problem but it's a problem which is not such a big problem let's put it this way instead of minus one half you can choose some other line uh, some other value let's say one or zero or something like this well in case of one we you immediately hit, hit hit the by the way if you hit one then um, this particular um, uh, calculations uh, should re really um, uh, produce point x1 which is also equal to 1, right? Let, let's just check it, just, just for fun. So if x0 is equal to 1, x1 is equal to 1 minus and f of x0 you substitute 1 and you get 0, right? Divided by doesn't really matter what, so you will get exactly 1. So from x0 equal 1 you get x1 is equal to 1 which basically indicates that you, by accident, hit the solution. But in any case, this is not a, such a big problem when the tangential line is parallel to the x-axis and your um, derivative is equal to zero. You just choose another point. That's fine. Now, um, another problem, well, what if the function doesn't really have zero at all? I mean, you don't know really if this function uh, intersects the x-axis uh, uh, or not. So you start looking for a solution and you will never find it. Right? So if, for instance, situation is... Let me just put some graph as an example. So let's say you have something like this. Let's say it's, it's a parabola, for instance. You start from here. That's your x0. You draw a tangential line. You get this. Okay? Now from this, this is your x1. You go up. You draw a tangential line. And you go here. This is your, cell, your x2. From x2, you go up and do some tangential line, get x3. So you will be probably dancing around certain things and you will never actually um, get to any solution. So your sequence x0, x1, x2, x, uh, etc. will never be any closer to 0 than certain value, basically, right? And more than that, at certain point, for instance, if you are very close to this and you draw a tangential line, your x, I don't know, sevens might be all the way up to the very large numbers. So, my point is, if the function doesn't have zero, the, obviously the Newton's method is non-converging to any solution. Can you identify it? Well, probably you can. If you are calculating, for instance, difference between uh, consecutive values which you are calculating, and if you see that this is not actually going to zero, but at some point goes um, to a completely different direction, it's increasing instead of 
decreasing. I mean, in the previous example, we saw that it's really decreasing because it goes to a certain limit. If it goes, if it converges to a limit, then the difference between successive uh, numbers, uh, consecutive numbers, is getting less and less, right? But in case there is no limit, it goes nowhere. So this is your case when uh, the Newton's method fails, and you can identify it by basically analyzing something like this. And another method, uh, another case, excuse me, when, when it fails. Let me just demonstrate it first graphically. Let's say you have this type of a graph. By, by the way, there is a very good example. It's f of x is equal to x times e to the power minus x. This is a graph. And if you're looking for this point, if you start somewhere here, this is your x0, then eventually you will get whatever is necessary, somehow. You go here, you go here. I mean, it will dance around the zero from left and then right and you will get it. But if you start somewhere here, if this is your x0, look what happens. etc. You go to infinity. So in some cases, when the point which you start from is really far away from the zero point, then it might actually lead you to a completely different direction. What's important is this hump. If it's uh, closer to the real solution than this hump, then you will succeed. If it's further from the solution which you're looking for than this hump, you will not succeed. So it's very important to guess approximately where your solution might be and get the value of x0 as close to that supposed to, uh, uh, supposedly to be, to be found uh, uh, solution, as close as possible. Because only if it's a very close, if it's before some, some, some kind of a hump uh, affects your, uh, affect the behavior of the function, only in this particular case you can count on successful iteration and successful recursive process which gives you the solution eventually. Other than that, if you are starting a little bit further than hump like this, you will not succeed. Well, basically, that's it. This is all I wanted you to know about the Newton's method of finding zeros of the function. So it's very important to make sure that the function does have zeros, and there is no universal um, rule uh, how to determine this. For instance, uh, at certain moment you have the function positive and certain other value of argument you, you have the function negative. Then somewhere in between there is uh, uh, the zero function, okay? There is a point where the function is equal to zero. That's one of the reasons, right? So if the function is, let's say, positive here and function is negative here, then somewhere it crosses the x-axis. We are supposed that the function is differentiable, obviously, and therefore um, it's continuous, and that's why it's supposed to intersect the x-axis -ax 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 if it's positive at one value and negative in another value. And finally, what's very important is to realize if the function has some kind of a hump like that. Um, now, how can this particular hump be, you know, classified, if you wish? Well, basically, in this particular case, the first derivative is positive, and the sec and this thing it's negative because here we are monoto monotonically. Um, uh, it's a monotonic behavior, right, of the, of the first der der derivative, and. Uh, 
here it's uh, so now we can actually look at the second derivative if you wish because here the second derivative would be positive um, uh, because the function because the tangent would be uh, it's in this case it's negative so it will be less negative if you wish um, in in this case in this case the first derivative is, the second derivative is negative um, but in any case there are certain um, approximate um, uh, consideration which which gives you a picture like this and if you anticipate that this will be the case then you get better be as close to a potential solution which you don't know and I understand it's difficult in some cases but that's what you have to do otherwise the process will not converge okay that's it thank you very much I do suggest you to go to the website and read all the notes for this lecture they're a little bit more precise and more detailed maybe than whatever I was just talking about and uh, good luck thank you <laughs>